Hi, I'm John. I work at one of our Apple retail stores, and I'll be taking you through a guided tour of iPhoto 09. Digital cameras have made it easy to take a lot of great pictures. And to help better organize them, iPhoto 08 introduced events, a feature that automatically groups photos based on when they were taken. Now, iPhoto 09 introduces faces and places. These new features make it even easier to browse and search photos not just by when they were taken, but by who appears in them and where they were taken. Let's take a look. If you're like me, your most important photos are of the people in your life. With faces, finding those photos is now a lot easier. Faces uses facial recognition technology to organize photos by the people in the pictures. Here's how it works. iPhoto uses advanced face detection to find faces in your photos. Then it uses face recognition to help you group photos that appear to be the same person. This lets you easily put names to faces and keep your photos organized by person. Let's take a look at how you can get started by naming two of the people in this family vacation. I simply open this event and select a photo, like this one of Allie. To add her name, I click the Name button. iPhoto has already detected Allie's face, so I'll just type in her name. When I move to the next picture, iPhoto now automatically recognizes Allie's face and suggests her name. So this time, all I have to do is click to confirm it. I'll also add a name for Allie's mom, Claire. When I'm done adding names to photos, I just click here. Next, I click on this icon to switch to the new Faces view, where iPhoto displays a single snapshot on a corkboard for each person I've named. Now, iPhoto can use the faces I've identified to automatically go through my whole library and find more pictures of each person. For example, to see more photos of Claire, I just double-click her snapshot, and iPhoto shows me other pictures in the library that might also be Claire. Now I can click Confirm Name to quickly verify iPhoto suggestions. This feedback helps iPhoto do a better job of recognizing Claire's face, allowing it to suggest more matches right away. As I import more pictures of Claire, iPhoto will automatically update the suggestions to include the new photos. Every time I name a new person, another snapshot gets added to the corkboard. I can even skim across a snapshot to see more photos of that person. To change the key photo for any snapshot, just press the spacebar. Once you've identified the people in your life using faces, it takes just a few clicks to create slideshows, books, calendars, and cards featuring the best shots of your friends and family. Using the new Places feature in iPhoto 09, you can now explore your library based on where you took each photo. Some new consumer cameras, like this Nikon I have here, automatically add GPS coordinates when you snap a picture and record exactly where you took the photo. iPhone does the same thing when you take a picture and tell it to use your current location. When you import photos from one of these cameras into your library, iPhoto imports the location data. That means you can organize and browse your photos based on where you took them. Here's a photo shot with a GPS-enabled camera. When I click the Info button in the corner of the tile, iPhoto flips it over to show me exactly where this photo was taken. I can see it as a pin on a map or in a satellite view. To see the locations for an entire event, I select the event and flip it over. Now I can see where I took all the photos in the event and retrace my route. If your camera doesn't capture GPS location data, or you have photos in your library taken before GPS was available, it's really easy to add locations manually. Here's how. I select any group of photos or an existing event and flip it over. Then I click the Location field, start typing, and choose a location I want from the menu. iPhoto instantly applies that location to the photos. Once your photos have locations associated with them, iPhoto understands where each of your pictures was taken relative to other reference points, such as surrounding states, cities, and even nearby points of interest. It knows, for example, that the Eiffel Tower is located in the city of Paris, which is in the country of France. 
so now I can use the names of any of these places to find the photos I'm looking for. I can search for photos by typing Paris, or I could simply type Eiffel Tower, and iPhoto displays all the images taken there. The Places view gives us two additional ways to explore our photos using locations. First, I can use this fully interactive map, which lets me see at a glance where all my photos were taken. To find pictures from any area, I just zoom in and click. I can also use the new column browser to find photos. In this view, iPhoto lets me browse locations from the most general to the most specific. Here I'll click on the U.S., narrow my search to New York State, then click New York City. Then I'll narrow it still further to photos taken at a specific point of interest. In this case, Rockefeller Center. That's Places, which lets you find photos based on where you took them. Half the fun of taking photos is sharing them with other people on the web. iPhoto09 lets you share photos with your Facebook friends with a single click. Here are some photos I'd like to share. I can share all of these, or just the ones I select. Then all I have to do is click the Facebook button, then Publish. iPhoto automatically creates a new Facebook album, and since I'm already logged into my Facebook account, my photos start uploading right away. Now suppose my friend Lisa checks out this photo on her PC and notices that her friend Zoe doesn't have a name tag. That's because Zoe hasn't been named in iPhoto. But Lisa can quickly add her name in Facebook. The next time iPhoto syncs with Facebook, Zoe's name will be added to her face in my library. I can then confirm her name to add her snapshot to my corkboard. A full screen slideshow is a great way to enjoy and share your photos. And iPhoto09 makes it easier than ever to put together captivating slideshows. To instantly make a slideshow, I can select any group of photos, a person and faces view, a place, or an event. I'll pick this event, then click the Slideshow button, and choose a theme. This new scrapbook theme should look great with these photos. I click Play, and iPhoto creates a polished cinematic slideshow. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the at any point, I can use these controls to change the music or the speed. There are six themes to choose from. In addition to Classic, Ken Burns, and Scrapbook, there's Shatter. Snapshots. and sliding panels. iPhoto uses face detection to correctly position the photos so that none of the faces are cropped out of the frame. I can even use the film strip at the bottom of the screen to jump ahead or jump back to any photo in the slideshow. When I'm done creating my slideshow, I can send it to iTunes, where I can easily sync it to my iPod or iPhone and share my photos wherever I go. iPhoto 